While divers may quickly grasp the basics of propulsion during their initial scuba course, it is essential to emphasize that mastering efficient propulsion is a fundamental skill for achieving exceptional diving, and this importance is often overlooked. Like many advanced techniques in scuba diving, the frog kick was initially pioneered by cave divers with the primary goal of minimizing disturbances to the sediment on the bottom while maneuvering through tight passages. The frog kick stands as perhaps the most effective method of propulsion available to scuba divers that fits almost all situations, and its advantages extend well beyond its non-silting properties. It is primarily using your quads, which is a large muscle group on the front of your leg, and this is helping you to sustain this kick over a long period of time. One of the key advantages of utilizing this technique lies in its ability to conserve energy, thereby preserving your air supply. Unlike alternative methods, the frog kick doesn't require continuous energy expenditure to propel the diver forward. This is attributable to the passive gliding phase inherent in the technique. Additionally, it serves as a stabilizing kick since it involves synchronized leg movements, enhancing your balance in the water. Let's delve into the detailed mechanics of how this kick is executed. This technique can be deconstructed into three distinct phases. The first phase is known as the loading stroke. During this phase, you draw your legs in, being careful not to let your knees drop. Simultaneously, you spread your feet apart, resulting in your legs being slightly apart with your feet pointing in opposite directions. Moving on to the power stroke portion of the kick, we bring our feet together while extending our legs as if we were clapping the blades of our fins together by subtly tilting our ankles toward each other. Finally, we transition into the glide portion of the kick, so in summary, it involves loading, kicking, and gliding in a synchronized sequence. To fully capitalize on the gliding action, ensure that you restart the sequence only when you sense a deceleration in your forward movement. A variation of this finning technique, known as the modified frog kick, can be used to reduce your forward momentum, granting you the ability to move slower and to make precise directional adjustments. The modified frog kick essentially mirrors the standard version in movement but with a more subtle power stroke phase resulting in a shorter glide. Give particular focus to the diver's legs. Instead of fully extending them, rely on the ankles to generate forward momentum. It's important to note that the angle of the fins remains consistent after the loading phase, just as in the standard frog kick. Ensure that your legs and knees maintain their positions throughout the movement. Once you've mastered the correct technique and gained confidence, taking your skill to the next level involves practicing without fins. When you eliminate the use of fins, you must rely solely on precise execution without the assistance of the fin blades. This practice is crucial for ingraining the correct movements into your muscle memory. Once you can efficiently perform without fins, real diving situations will become considerably easier to handle. Make sure that someone is always capturing your practice sessions on video. By reviewing recorded footage, you gain valuable insights into areas that need improvement, allowing you to fine-tune your technique and enhance your proficiency in diving. Keep in mind, like in all aspects of diving, proper weighting and buoyancy control are essential for success. If you're unsure about your current proficiency level, start by refining the basics before delving into new techniques. Thanks for watching and hope you learned something. Consider subscribing to Flow State Divers to become part of the community of conscious divers and to get notified on our upcoming content.